Football Podcast. Hoops and Heels. Hello, everyone, and welcome back yet again to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed that last thing. When we continue our fantasy NFL season, we will transition from the QBs to the running backs. Now, a lot of interesting performances from the running backs. A lot of physicality, a lot of new faces and new places that really bring versatility to different offenses. But at the end of the day, I really think there's a standard that's being set in terms of the running backs. Because a lot of teams still use the run game to great effect. And what I found very interesting was that two of the players on this list are running backs under new head coaches. And it's very telling that these new head coaches are defensive-minded as well. We'll get to these guys a little bit. But at the end of the day, it does speak to the fact that running backs can be used in many different ways. There are some players on this list who are fantastic receiving running backs as well, and there are some who are just ground-and-pound guys. So it's really up to who you like and who you think fits the profile of your fantasy football team. With that being said, let's go into our running back winners from this week. So let's start off, go way back to... Friday night, where running back made a debut in a foreign country, and he really set them ablaze. First time since Terrell Owens, that Eagle, scored three touchdowns in their debut, and he really looks fantastic in an Eagles uniform, in an Eagles offense that really needed his kind of versatility to really open things up for their dynamic QB, Jalen Hurts. We start off with Saquon Barkley. What I love about Saquon Barkley is that he is just a fascinating player now because of the way he perfectly fits into this Philadelphia Eagles offense. In terms of all the offseason moves of all these running backs, Saquon Barkley made the most sense. And I think that makes the most sense because it doesn't necessarily alleviate too many burdens for Jalen Hurts in terms of this offense. I still think if we got a question last week that I want to refer to from a uh, commentator in Cuppy who was talking about the push-push, and I still think Jalen Hurts will be the guy there. But he just opens up a lot of different ways that the, the Philadelphia Eagles are going to be versatile and volatile in their rushing attacks. It also opens up a lot of things with the passing game as well. So as you can see, 24 carries on the ground, 106 yards, three total touchdowns, of course, two catches, 23 yards, and one touchdown through the air. 33.2 fantasy points overall. And so Saquon really set the standard for running. Will he be the best fantasy running back this year? Maybe not, because of the way he's now diversifying Philadelphia Eagles offense. There are still guys out there. A.J. Brown had a fantastic game. Devontae Smith is going to go to this offense that I really like. There will be games that Saquon will get a lot of touches, maybe not the yards production that we saw this Friday. But at the end of the day, he's really set the standard for a different look for the Philadelphia Eagles offense. Coming next, a guy who also makes perfect sense for his perspective a particular offense is he moved to a different team and that is Joe Mixon and what Joe Mixon actually we go to the end here Joe Mixon the reason why I think he makes a lot of sense for Houston is because Houston then expect to be so vertical in the first season Bobby Slowick really thought that he could emphasize the run game there but for some reason they didn't like what they liked they didn't see what they liked in Damian Pierce so they went on and got Joe, Joe Mixon and in the first game, they set the standard at running back. 30 carries on the ground really goes to show that when you have a dominant quarterback like C.J. Stroud, you can really start to build around it. This was a team-friendly deal as well because they're taking advantage of acquiring veteran players to incorporate into the offense as C.J. Stroud is still in his rookie contract. And this was probably the savviest move of them all for them. 30 carries, 115 yards, 1 TD, 26.8 fantasy points for Joe Mixon. And the reason why I think this can continue for Joe Mixon is because he didn't even have many touches in the receiving game. C.J. Stroud now has so many different options that if he really wants to, on early downs to get going, he can really just check down to a guy like Joe Mixon. And Joe Mixon can do the rest. He's not just a ground and pound guy. He had a lot of versatility. And so that's why I really like this fit for Joe Mixon in Houston. And going back, let's talk about Aaron Jones. Because Aaron Jones is just as important to this Minnesota Vikings offense as continued success and hopeful success of Sam Darnold. And Aaron Jones this game really kind of was typical Aaron Jones. He wasn't necessarily you know, overwhelmingly getting down the field. He was choosing his spots, big chunk plays in there. 14 carries, 94 yards, one touchdown. 
for total 16.9 fantasy points. He's my kind of fantasy running back. He offers a balance. Not a high-end guy, but he's still a guy who can get the job done. He's going to need to beat one of the better offensive players. As you know, Simon develops his rapport with uh, Justin Jefferson. If Jordan Addison is unhealthy for large portions, he might be Hawkins comes back. All of this is going to have to make sense. Aaron Jones just makes sense. They really needed a run back, even if, you know, Kirk Cousins had stayed, because Alex Kim Madison was just not cutting it. And so, picking up Aaron Jones really surprised me for the Minnesota Vikings to have some mark of hope and optimism when there may not be anything right for them, because Aaron Jones is a nice little security blanket on the ground. And so guys that I'm going to talk about that are not pictured here are the two guys I mentioned before. Under first-year head coaches who preach defensive intensity, they really were the stars in terms of their offensive play. And it really opened up the game for both these teams. I'm talking about Kenneth Walker and Armando Stevenson. Let's start with Kenneth Walker. It looks like it would be a very harrowing telling down the ground for Seattle. As a Seattle Seahawks fan, it was not looking pretty in the first half when it came to the run game. Two safeties. But in the second half, Mike McDonald must have had a legendary half speed, as they say, because they came out and they dominated the Denver Broncos. Kenneth Walker was a huge part of that. Opened up a lot of their offense from his physicality, his ability to have that insane contact bounce. Got a touchdown. He carries one three yards, one touchdown for a total of 18 point and fantasy points. So he really set the tone for that big second half of the Seattle offense. And then Ramondre Stevenson, man. Talk about being an integral part of what Ron May wants to build on both sides of the football, at least on the offensive side of that matter. 25 carries, 120 yards, 20, 21.6 fantasy points. And he just proves that the Patriots can fit the an offense. Develop drive, be competent in possession, don't turn the ball over. Then they could be in much more football than we expect. And the reason why they upset the Bengals, they kept it close, they kept the football, they're going to make silly mistakes, and ultimately their defense did just enough to stop Joe Burrow. And that formula is going to have to translate. And it's interesting that these two teams, the Seahawks and the Patriots, will play each other. Cause it's going to be a very interesting matchup because obviously the Seahawks profile is the better offense. The Patriots have something going here. They can develop their brand of smash mouth football under Ron Mayo. This is going to be a really physical game. Both are good defense. Both teams have an offensive philosophy that they might want to live by. And so both of these running backs deserve a lot of recognition, especially helping the first year head coaches try and maintain that identity and set that identity from week one. So two important wins for them. Overall, the running back market, very versatile. So keep your pulse on the court on the running back market because it's ever evolving, it's ever changing. And at the end of the day, there are going to be guys that just surprise you week in, week out. And this week, my running back winners definitely surprised me because maybe they had to learn a new offense this offseason. Maybe they weren't expected to go to week one. Maybe they just didn't have a large volume of touches in NFL trying to translate to the passing game a little bit more. Some of these guys, and I mentioned, really profile strong, physical, just classic running backs. Aaron Jones. Joe Mixon. Maybe not Kenneth Walker because I still like him as a receiver, but what he did in that second half that was exemplary in terms of smash my football. Ramondi Stevens, one of the younger examples of that. So overall, taking advantage of this versatile running back market can really pay dividends. And even looking at this comment, all those running backs, yeah, there are some young guys in there, but they're all physical. From Ron Hayes' kind of comment here. So at the end of the day, if I'm a fantasy football manager, and I'm watching the show looking at all the running back winners and trying to decipher what I want for my team. This is just to show that even when running backs are moving around, they're resetting the market and doing different things and performing on the field, there are still going to be guys week in, week out. Week one was a good example of this. They just have that aura about them. They can deliver for you, their team in real life, and most importantly, make sure that no matter what, you feel confident and what you're doing on the market in terms of the running back position. Now to do it for the segment coming up, we have to look at the running back losers. There definitely were some guys who did not perform. A lot of guys who failed expectations. A lot of guys who I was really high on but really did not deliver for me. So I'm going to have to uh, stand and deliver uh, a kind of apologetic kind of segment here because some of these guys were my guys. But it is what it is. It is still a week one. I still have hope for them. But at the end of the day, it has to be done. Back talking my running back losers right after this short break.